Hi all, it's Dr. Nick here. Now that the weather is getting warmer, race season is up in full swing. So now you want to get out, go for these long runs, get your cardio back up, and go run, you know, every race, you know, every other weekend or whatever, and stay and stay outside. Which is great, but you need to be prepared. Because with warmer weather, with longer distances, you're at risk for dehydration and cramping out. So this video is all going to be about drinking your water and how to prevent that. Now, if you've heard stats that 75% of Americans are dehydrated, that's not entirely true. Um, it's usually, it's sometimes around 15 to 30% actually, and this is mostly in older adults. Now, first off, what is dehydration? Dehydration is a loss of water from your body, would it be through the skin, the GI tract, through the through your lungs, through or through your kidneys, through excretion, that you fail to replace. In simpler terms, if you lose more water than you take in, then you're dehydrated. Now there's a couple different kinds of dehydration depending on how much sodium you lose in your water. But for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of OCR, I'm going to be speaking about the type of dehydration where you sweat out, which involves losing sodium as well as losing water. Now, exercise and heat together, which you see in a lot of these races, you know, especially in the south, where the weather might be a little bit warmer, are both going to contribute to dehydration. So say you're running a race. How do you know if you're dehydrated? Well, one of the things to look for is, one, are you thirsty? Another thing you can look for is if you're feeling fatigued, if you're lightheaded, if you have really dry skin, especially around the lips. Um, if you check your heart rate, it's gonna be it's gonna be bumping a lot, which might already be bumping because you're running and running the race. So that, that might not be the best sign to look for. But a very good sign of dehydration is looking at your urine. So how much are you producing and what color it is? You should be producing a good amount and it should be clear to light yellow. If you get into those dark darker colors and you're not producing a, producing as much urine, that can be a clear telltale sign that you're dehydrated. So that's what you look for on the course. But what is actually going on there? Well, when you're dehydrated, yes, your heart rate is going to go up. And you're going to use more of your muscle glycogen. Those two things are going to be normal to do when you're, when you're exercising. But if you're dehydrated, what you're also going to have is decreased stroke volume, which is how much blood is your heart actually pumping to the rest of your body. And when that happens, your cardiac output actually goes down as well. So what is that? That basically means how much blood is being pumped through the rest of your body that's filled with oxygen, that's going to supply you know, your muscles with the energy they need to keep going. Not only that, the blood that is getting pumped through is thicker. So it's going to move a lot slower and it's going to transport you know, these nutrients a lot slower as well. So basically when you're dehydrated, your muscles just aren't getting the nutrients and the oxygen that they need to keep going. And like I mentioned before, this is compounded in hotter environments when the sun's out or if you've been going for a long period of time. So these longer distance events like the beast in the suit in the, the super and the ultra, you're more likely to see these effects. Quick little segue here to talk about muscle cramps. They are not caused by dehydration. It is a common belief that they are, but the process is way more complex than that. Cramps are actually caused by sustained muscle contraction that builds and builds and builds, but it starts in your nervous system. Now, similar to dehydration, it is more prevalent in hotter environments and if you're going for longer distances. So again, the super, the beast, the ultra, these longer, longer distances, you're more likely to see some cramps. It happened to me when I was running my ultra back in October, and it was not fun. We've talked a bit about dehydration and cramps. Now, what do we do to prevent that? First off, make sure you prehydrate. So drink a lot even before the event started. So when you do sweat early on in the event, you're actually losing that excess water that you've already put into your body. And it's important to drink based on your thirst. So drink when you're thirsty. Make sure you supplement with those electrolytes that you lose in your sweat. But this is going to be a little different for everybody. There's no timetable as to exactly when you should be taking this. And if you're also running a shorter distance like the sprint, actually it might be beneficial to limit that water intake as well. Because when you lose 
body weight, you actually go a little bit faster. So make sure you drink on thirst, but don't drink for the sake of drinking. Now for cramps. If you, you may have seen people with mustard packets on the course, try electrolytes, all these different types of things. These are two really good ways to help help them. First off, statically stretch. So if you're cramping into your if you're cramping into your calf, just stretch your calf for a little bit and it should go away. Another great way to do it is to use natural spices. So capsaicin, cinnamon, ginger, things like another way to help prevent cramping is for adequate strength training. So for example, if you cramp into your hamstring, training your glutes and your other hip centers will you will take some pressure off of that area. You'll be able to go further for longer. Those muscles can't cramp out, they can't fatigue. So I hope this video was helpful about dehydration and cramping. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. Stay safe out there.